The Twins dropped their home opener, and if you were to listen to some of the fans, it's like the sky is falling. It was a fairly routine 4-2 loss, and we're going to break it down. This is Locked on Twins. You are Locked on Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello again and welcome back to another edition of Locked On Twins. I'm your host, Brandon Warren, and you can unfollow me on the tweets at Brandon underscore W-A-R-N-E. And joined, as I almost always am, by Dave Brown at Answer Dave Brown on the tweets. Go give him a follow. Get him up to a 1,000. But, Dave, what's up? Quit following me. Oh, you mean on Twitter. That's okay. Just not yeah. in real life because I'm looking over my shoulder. Don't try nothing. Well, hey, thanks for making Locked on Twins your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. And of course, as part of the Locked on Podcast Network, we're your team every day. Love to hear from you in the comments on YouTube. Give us a five-star review on the podcast platform you're listening on. All of those things are very helpful. We'd love to hear from you one way or another. So please, please, please feel free to do that. This episode brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use code all lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. Dave, twins lose. And honestly, I feel like people think the sky is falling. And there's obviously added scrutiny because it's the home opener and there's only been six games. And when they've lost, they've looked kind of crappy. And okay, that's enough. Ands. I don't get it though. Like we we all watched this team last year sleepwalk through the first half offense. Like this should not be surprising that games like this happen, even for good teams. And I will concede the point that if the rest of the division is better than it was last year, they need to get it going a little sooner than they did last year. But again, it's three wins, three losses. We do not need to have a federal case in front of the Supreme Court over three wins and three losses, including a loss that they struck out 15 times. They went 0 for 12 with runners in scoring position. All things that suck, but it was a baseball game and that's what happens in baseball games. There was a hilarious quote attributed to no one in particular, uh, one of the press people, one of the media writers, however else you want to say it. Mm-hmm. They struck out 15 times, and they didn't even have Joey Gallo around. I, thought that <laughs> no, was funny. I, I know who said that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah he said, a, what's that? I think, was it Patrick? It was Patrick, yeah, because yeah. Lavelle said a gravelly-voiced older oh. reporter, I think he said, or gravelly. The gravelly voice gave it away for me. But- As Gordon Whitmire would say, a press box wag was overheard saying. He says that. He said that yeah. all the time when he was what, in what does that wag mean? I don't know, wives and girlfriends. That's not what it means, though. I think That's like the, wags your finger, like my yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, G, G, I, G, I used, G Dub used to cover the twins actually. Uh, oh, yeah, for quite some time. So yeah, he's that. well known around these parts. But I thought yeah. that was a funny way of looking at it. Um, didn't necessarily make you feel better about it. You know the. Um, There are things, you know, about which to complain, but the the whole, almost the point, one of the points of Twitter is to, you know, give your takes instantly. And, you know, you kind of got to cut the people who are on Twitter who tweet a lot and complain about a lot of things are are easily startled. They're, Mm -hmm. They're easily prompted to do so. So remember the source when we talk about everybody being, um, you know, uh, hang dog and panic about what's panicked about what's going on. It's the uh, it's the nature of Twitter too to kind of act like that. So let's not. Maybe some people think the sky is falling, but I don't think everybody does. Twins over. Feel better now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I uh, I did. We're gonna revive a feature that was on the post game, the breathless post game minutes last season before before you were here, and it was called. The stat you won't hear anywhere else. This, today, 
was the Twins' worst offer with runners in scoring position since a 5-3 loss in Anaheim against the Angels where they were 0 for 14 on August 13th, 2022. I have data back 50 years. The Twins have never gone 0 for 12 or 0 for more than 12 and won a game dating back to 1974. Nor should they. That it usually means that you have not won. But um, so that's that's quite a ways. That's quite a ways. Yeah, they're the the off. They, they don't score unless Ryan Jeffers comes through with a home run or yeah, they didn't play today. Right. The and or the other team like scores for them, like on a pass ball or a wild pitch or twelve walks or you know they're they're kind of uh, they're the offense is definitely. Not where you want it to be. Now that said, uh, the, the teams they've played so far have been generally competitive. Uh, Cleveland, especially, and Cleveland usually has good pitching, mm-hmm. and the people who pitch for Cleveland today are usually good pitchers. So Tanner Bybee and you know, Barlow's hit and miss, but he can be good. I'm not sure about Hunter Gaddis, other than sometimes he looks like the dude from Harry Potter. This changeup was pretty good. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, and Class A, did Class A close? Class A close, right? Didn't he? No? Yeah. Yep. He did. Well, he's good. He's an all-star. So uh, these are professional pitchers, too. The other side has something to say about it. And, um, you know, it's three and three is not uh, ideal. And it seems like it, it could be a lot better had the Twins played better, but they haven't yet. And it's, uh, you know, at least Alex Kirilov is still trucking along and, uh, you know, going. They won't go and get him tomorrow because there's no game. But maybe the day after that, they, they'll go and get him. Yeah, I don't know if a day off is going to be what this uh, team needs, this base needs as far as fan base to kind of just recenter. But Do the Wolves again, play tomorrow? Can they people occupy themselves with that? Well, let's see. They played a back-to-back, wrapped it up with, uh, with Toronto, absolutely paced in Toronto last night. Uh, one... 33 to 85. But yeah, they play the Suns in Phoenix and then they follow that up with the Lake Show. So it uh, looks like six games left on their schedule. So it will give us something to look at. Did you see uh, Royce Lewis had gone to the Wolves game against the Raptors? I did. He had uh, <laughs> chips and cheese. He had nachos and they were, he was sitting in the, uh, the Polad seats, you know, the ones that they, they, the, they're forced to buy because the Polads are too cheap to get them good seats. See, I'm <laughs> trying to fit in here. Yeah, hey, you're you're uh, acquitting yourself quite quite nicely. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was kind of funny. And then he, somebody says, you know, dude, you can you can sit in nicer seats. And he goes, ah, AK paid for them. <laughs> yeah, says, uh, the rookie contracts, you know, to, the, the money doesn't go as far as it used to. But I'm sure that's uh, I, I've never been into like, inside Target Center. So I, is that what it's still called? Yeah, for now, um, anyhow. So I assume it's not it's not too bad. It's an you know it's although they, it seemed like they were in the last row, but maybe not. It's a decent enough venue. Uh, it's it, it's like it's like the dynamic of uh, non baseball stadiums. Baseball stadiums have all that unique character, yeah. both on the field and off the field. Meanwhile, an NBA stadium, outside of maybe some pyrotechnics and sound system and stuff, eh, they're can't all the do same. that much different. But. Uh, Let's see. Uh, we let's do something quick here before we take our first pause. Um, yeah, AK looked. I thought, uh, obviously, you know, a triple off the bat. Uh, he's he's trucking along there pretty good. Uh, one for four in general. But Carlos Correa, uh, three hits, uh, two straight to uh, start, and then stroke the double later on. Um, this was an offense that had, like we said, twelve at bats. 13 plate appearances with runners in scoring position. They only scored two runs. How, how encouraged are you that despite the fact that they only scored two runs, they took, uh, you know, in innings, at least one on average plate appearance with a runner in scoring position per inning. Like there's still something to be gleaned from that. Isn't there? Well, I suppose it is better than going up there and not putting anybody on base. So, uh, you know, there, there is that. I, I would imagine that uh, a lot of it is even what was happening in the Brewer series. 
I'm sure they were putting pressure on themselves. All right, we need a hit here. I've got to come through. And, you know, you do that in, in a baseball game. And mm-hmm. it's uh, you're usually spelling your own doom. But I also think, getting back to my earlier point, that uh, the, the Guardians have good pitchers and have had good pitchers, and they know what they're doing too. So they're, uh, you know, pitching out of trouble. And, uh, you know, it seemed like it, it, it's all when it's your team, you always, it always seems like whoever it is up there comes to town and you're like, oh, we can't hit anybody. We can't hit this person. But then if you look and see and they, and they go somewhere else and they have a few more good games in a row, you'd see, well, we kind of ran into somebody on a good streak too. So that happens in baseball all the time. So I, I think it's uh, – I wouldn't say I'm encouraged or discouraged. Mm-hmm. I just think they're they're pressing right now, and they have – these are relatively quality, competitive opponents. Mm-hmm. So they're just going to have to do a little better, and things will get better. And like you said, they're 3-3, three and three, and that's okay. Yeah, I think sometimes the hardest thing is to just say, hey, not everything that happens on the baseball field needs anything more than just – Hey, that was baseball. They they played like Carlos Correa had a ball kick off his glove, and someone said that can't happen in that spot. A good shortstop is going to make twelve errors in a year, like one every ten games. It's it's not uncommon. Uh, Willie Castro kind of cut in front of him. It was a better angle for a third baseman, I think, to come across. It's a thing that happened. It doesn't have to be. Oh, Carlos Correa has been working on grounders in the hole or anything. Like we don't have to have a full. Um, affidavit for each occurrence on the baseball field hey in some in some ways you're saying we should just cut the show short because we're overdoing it you and i both know that's never going to happen hey let's uh let's hit our first break here and uh talk about some of our sponsors we come back i have some royce lewis talk uh someone in the division getting absolutely blown out spoiler alert you'll know who it is. i wonder who that was yeah and then uh a theory i have on the twins still adding pitching before this season is out. And I, again, it's not going to be all that surprising if you've listened to us, but uh, I don't know, but we'll be right back. If you are looking to eat stress-free this spring, you can do it with factors, delicious, ready to eat meals. If you are looking for, whether it's keto, calorie, smart, protein, plus vegan, veggie, you name it, they've got it. It's a fresh, never frozen meal that is chef crafted dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. This ad might take almost that long, but protein, uh, sorry, also discover more than 60 add-ons every single week, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, beverages, and all things that will keep you fueled and full and feeling good all day long. So what are you waiting for? You can get started today and fuel up for your springtime goals. Again, these meals are ready in two minutes, ready to eat, and you can get back to doing what you love to do this spring. If you want gourmet meals, they also have them with premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini, and asparagus. I, I know what most of those things mean, I might add. Uh, but hey, no fuss, no muss, no mess. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Just heat and eat. Savor the good stuff. And you can customize your weekly meals with the flexibility to get as much or as little as you need. Say you're going out of town at the end of the week. Or... You know that uh, one night you're going to want to do something different. Boom. You set it up like that, and it's uh, it's the way to go. Factor is your solution for fast premium meals without the need for cooking. And they're celebrating Earth Day all month long. It's Earth Month Eats. Uh, look for that badge, and it's their lowest carbon footprint meals. Head to factormeals.com slash MLB 50 And again, use that code LockedOnMLB50. You'll get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code locked on MLB 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on MLB 50. And you get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. And then our friends at prize picks, the number one uh, daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They want to get you all signed up. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS because it's just you against the numbers. You're not facing other people who are putting together algorithms or entering 80 different entries in that con uh, competition that you're in. It's just you and the numbers going more than or less than on two to six player stat projections. 
and you can watch your winnings roll in. You can go risky. You can go a little more uh, cautious, whatever you want to do through demons and goblins. So demon picks are marked in red. They might get you, you know, your heartbeat going, your, uh, your blood pumping a little bit, but you can also win big money because you can get, it's basically got like uh escalators or accelerators. So you can get a hundred times your money. So if you put down 10 bucks on a really, especially devious one, hundred times your money is a thousand bucks. So again, you can be as risk averse or uh, as much of a risk taker as you want to be. If you want to be a little less of a risk taker, you get a goblin pick. It's marked in green because it's designed to keep you in the green, keep you landing consistent victories. And with lower payouts, it's less risky, but it just is a good way to get a consistent winning streak going. So if you're into the NBA, you can pick more than or less than on three pointers, turnovers committed, pretty much anything you can imagine. And for baseball, it's more than or less than on things like pitcher strikeouts and first inning runs. So download the app today and enter code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. Again, that code is locked on MLB. It's all one word, all lowercase. And you can get that first deposit match up to a hundred bucks. Join prize picks today. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, Dave, we're coming to the middle point of our show and Royce Lewis said before the game that he had gotten a platelet-rich plasma, PRP for the uninitiated, injection into his troublesome quad. And it sounds as though he he wanted to be honest and say, you know, it's it's pretty nasty tear. Um, and I mean, a tear is a, a strain is a tear, like Will Carroll has yeah. been preaching for what feels like 15 years now or better. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, like it, it was hard to know how to really – process that because exactly what was he saying well it was just you know it's it's grade two but yeah it feels pretty severe he said you know how do you uh well it sounded like he thought that they're uh, like um not telling him the truth in fact didn't he say that he's like i don't think they're telling me the truth because they know i'm gonna rush it um I think that's what he said today and well and, and i get it he's an, he's eager to get back and they they are like dude as much as we want you back, when you uh, aggravate something like this, it makes the t timetable not only reset, but longer. Right. So, I mean, grade two is better than grade three, I suppose, um, from, from that standpoint. So that's... You sound like a Canadian high, uh, elementary school student. <laughs> yes. Um, I derailed you. I'm sorry. No, I'm trying to think of other ways that Canadians talk that's that it's different than us. Like they, they put, but they say park first instead of, I don't know. And Lake, I, we, but we say Lake Michigan or Michigan Lake, but oh, they say yeah. it like one way in Canada. And it's, uh, they don't say it the other way. And that's, that kind of reminded me of that. Um, so, and now, now I've derailed myself, but yeah. it, uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, well here, when you said plate, rich, rich, <laughs> plate, rich, <laughs> <laughs> platelet rich uh placelets no nope. plasma 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 liquid plasma yeah right um i've heard that 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 that's that they really don't nobody knows if that works i feel but like that, you have your thumbs in your suspenders while you're saying that like <laughs> you see i i hear i hear it. they're yeah. just telling their uh their I serum. Saw, i'm telling you yeah. I must say that no, I've I've heard and read you know medical testimony that that is I don't want to say baloney, but they really that is a shot in the dark, and there's no, it doesn't hurt, it's not against the rules, but uh, I don't know. I think that is let's we we can't do anything. Let's do something kind of medicine at this point. I don't I don't know that uh, plate rich. <laughs> You say it for me. The PRP, PRP. pitchers, yep. pitchers Rich fielding Rich. practice is uh, any any good, any any use whatsoever. So, I, you know, is he still out at least for a month? I think, yep. and then probably another month after that. But we'll see. Yeah, and at least he enjoyed he, the basketball game. Right, and you said he couldn't hurt. I was like, all oh, shots usually hurt if it was a needle. But again, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I uh, I'm eager to see him come back. I also think too, and when we mentioned this in uh not our most recent episode because we recorded two but um with discussion about jose miranda making some noise at third base where uh 
you know, him coming up and even looking semi like his second half 2022 version of himself would definitely make it easier on not Royce. It won't make it easier on Royce to not want to get back too fast, but if the offensive production can pick up and again, you know, and so many people are going to draw the conclusion Royce is out. The offense stinks. He's the only one who can hit blah, blah, blah. Uh, to, to some extent, the fact that they're basically hitless with runners uh, with, with the bases loaded since he's been hurt is kind of funny because that's his, his jam, his mojo. Yeah, his uh, That's his true. Thing. But he can't come up all those times anyway. He can only come up once an inning or so. So it's not like he would. Nah, it's not what Fernando Tatis Sr. did. That's true. That's true. So I think there's – I think the guys are still pressing getting back to that point. Uh, Although that said, I still feel like even with Royce Lewis, they can still use another hitter kind of like Miranda. Uh, You know, it it is hard to – uh, it does seem like Rocco loves using his guys. He's very, uh, you know, let's let's use everybody off the bench, you know, and that's good in a way. And um, they have a good bench and they're all ready to play. I still feel like they could use one more guy with some thump. Um, and especially if, you know, who's it, they're really lacking, like Walner needs to hit a home run or Kepler. I'm not going to blame it all on those two guys, but. Uh, they have not been very productive so far, and it is only six games, and it would be nice if one of them would hit a home run. That's all even I'm Car- Even Carlos Santana, for that matter, uh, you know, yeah, based with walks, but he's, to my untrained eye, doesn't seem like he's hitting the ball all that hard. So, uh, yeah, there, there's some things to be said there. I do want to talk about uh, left-on-left stuff that was that happened today. Uh, but first, let's have a word from Robin Hood, a sponsor we haven't heard from in a while. And then mm-hmm. we will wrap things up with uh, a few news and notes around the league and get you prepared also for game two of the series, which will come on uh, on Saturday. So we got some fun stuff coming up right here in just a moment. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. The offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info, claims are as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires uh, Robinhood gold for one year from the date of the start for the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRAs are available to U.S. customers in good standing. And Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. So left on left, the Twins did, um, they did allow Edouard Julien to take at least one plate appearance against him. And uh, Alex Kirloff, I think, got, if I'm not mistaken, why am I remembering him getting hit by a pitch by a lefty? But I, He did get not. hit by a pitch. I, I thought it was, I'm like, it's not in his wrist, is it? And it wasn't. So. Oh, you know what? I was uh, I was looking in the wrong spot. Twins got hit by two pitches again. There, there might be something going on here, like the Astros from a few, I'm kidding. Do they um, watch, do they stand, I haven't noticed, I meant to look, do they stand close to the plate? Uh, I think Walner does. I'm not sure about Kirilov. And, you know, it's... We're going to have it, to go back and look at all these now. Yeah, it's a game within the game kind of things I would want to watch. Uh, with Kirilov, it was Heron, so it wasn't, uh, you know, it was, it was... He was a lefty. I mean, I guess it was the lefty who threw today. Um, but he, you know, he's been... I think he's a little less pinch hittable when you consider how Matt Walner has swung it. Uh, Julian. I believe struck out. Um, Look, yeah, he, 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 he wasn't swinging very much. No, and sometimes. And honestly, uh, I got that with Bybee, 
because I think the was the were the bases loaded when he took his called third strike early in the game. Yeah. And Bybee basically threw like a breaking ball, perfectly located. And when the bases are loaded, full count, like I, I thought he'd throw a change up. The fastball is kind of like what you expect because your brain is trained to expect that. A lot of guys go to like a secondary that's maybe a little more controllable. I thought the breaking ball that he threw was like he could have done the Sam Cassell big ball dance coming off the mound, and I wouldn't have had a problem with it because the guts to throw that pitch in that spot is hats pretty... off to you. You know, hats off. No, I just have my glasses. Um, yeah, the 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 one uh, strikeout for uh, Julian was m- masterfully done. It was uh, yeah. it was a great pitch and you, one you, where you do have to tip your cap. I like uh, I I don't know if it, it was by choice, but I like that Rocco was getting um, it, Julian uh, some lefty time on lefty, just because it's like. You know, you you can't always do that in the fourth inning, you know, and and then not have him around for the rest of the game. That's sort of the down. You just, yeah, maybe it would be better to have a right-handed hitter up there, ideally. But then if you don't have Julian for the rest of the game, that's not necessarily a great thing. So, uh, Especially with the fact that everybody else that came out of the bullpen was right-handed. Yeah, well, there you go. You got to... You got to look ahead to that stuff too. So, hey, um, and Rocco does. He's a he's good at. He's usually very good at looking ahead to things and seeing things that maybe we miss the first time around. So, uh, uh, not maybe definitely if you're me. Um, well, I'm just trying to say, what's that? Yeah, I'm just I'm agreeing. I'm just oh, uh, yeah. crouching a little bit to oh, not yeah. make him sound like an absolute genius overlord. Twins came into today twenty two point four percent strikeout rate, nineteenth in MLB. So actually. What is that? Eleventh, twelfth best. So well, well over average. Still um, in the middle uh, third, I like to say. So anything after twenty, then you get into uh, kind bottom. of too high. So yeah. it's not. It's not. It, it is too high, but it's not. Uh, no, 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 no. Twenty-two. They're actually better than average. Then I'm ranking from the highest. All right. They, anyway, anyway, well, they I'm struck confused. out fifteen times today after being relatively. Uh, strikeout not prone uh, <laughs> not allergic because they have they still struck out plenty but how much do you care that they struck out 15 times today when they had only been striking out 22 percent of the time because the reason i ask is that's one thing that people are really driving home but also too like there's no real shame in tanner bybee dicing you up that's no. a really good pitcher no uh, i think it might have been a patrick tweet too about how <laughs> and they they struck out 15 times and uh you know, look who was on the mound, and it, it didn't make any sense because it was Bybee and it was Class A, and Barlow's pretty good sometimes. Class A didn't strike anybody out, shockingly. Isn't that crazy? Uh, that's, that, that all the more reason to say, hey, they struck out 15 times in eight innings instead of nine. Oh, wow. Now you're really hammering them twice an uh, inning. <laughs> that is too many, but the, the Guardians know how to pitch. I'll yep. just say that again. Well, and and they did have some dinkers and dunkers that uh, that landed just the way they always seem to for them. A um, couple of news and notes before we get out of here because we're quickly running out of time. Uh, Royals blow out the White Sox 10-1. This, first of all, I think the Royals are decent. I don't think they're great, uh, and I'm not going to sound off on that. But this White Sox team might lose 115 games this year. They are absolute um, – I don't want to say anything rude, but they're just, they're very, very bad. They're very, very bad. And there are our highlights slash lowlights from tonight where a ball was hit fairly routine to short. And I think Shoemake was playing short and yeah, uh, he made just, an error, yeah. just completely kicked it. Um, this feels like a Disney movie, like the before of a Disney movie. Oh, like angels in the outfield, but it's uh satanic and bad. And they're not uh, or at, least, at the very least before the, uh, before Christopher Lloyd showed up. Right. I see you know what I know all that going on, but I haven't seen that movie. That's like one of the few baseball movies I haven't seen because it just looks too dumb. Here's the deal. I I could get on you for that, but then if you named 10 other baseball movies, I've seen maybe one or two of them. I'm just I'm really bad with movies. So uh, Christopher Lloyd is the is the guy who's in charge of the Angels. He has the AL cap on and says, Call me Al. Uh I would say it's worth watching once. I watched it when I was eight, so it's I've been meaning to, but I mean it's- 
So too much Tony Danza is a lot. A little bit of Tony Danza is too much or something well, like that. Spoiler alert, they kill him off at the end. No. No, they really do. Um, well, <laughs> no, no, seriously, like, just go read the synopsis. Uh, Yuri Perez, big time pitching prospect, having Tommy John. Uh, Marlon's off to worst f- start in franchise history. There's already whispers, and they're turning into maybe not whispers, but louder that the uh, the Marlins might start doing some trading, or at least open up. That to- didn't take long. Hey, wh- who was it? Was it you that said we're only six games into the season, and now the Marlins are giving up already? Yeah, Make well, up your mind. the Marlins deserve what they get for uh, for trying to reassign Kim Ang, or how do you, I don't know how to say her last name? Is it Ang? Kim Ang. Kim Ang, after she put together a very, very solid team, all things considered, last year. And they're like, all right, well, you got your year of this. Like, I just have no idea what they're even trying to accomplish there. Yes, me neither. And and why would they get rid of the home run device as well? <laughs> well, Pablo Pablo said uh, they still have it there. It's got to be what is like 3 whatever. And it's it got to be 3 because that's the 3 Mr. 3 like – Pitbull would say in one of his songs, Mr. 305. Oh, that's yeah. what he would do. Okay. Yes, he would. I, I'm um, not Pitbull's songwriter, so don't get on me. I have seen some people say the twins, uh, that they'd be a good fit for Arise, which, hey, as long as it doesn't cost you Pablo Lopez, I wouldn't be opposed to trying. That doesn't more. make any sense. They got Julian. He's already hitting left handed as a second baseman. What is Arise going to do? What is he going to play? Let him DH, let Kirilov play left and let Walner, uh, hit again i don't know i did uh, say they needed another bat so yeah they did well anyway i'm gonna leave you be and uh we'll catch up here soon no ball game tomorrow but uh we'll see what we cook up or at the very least we'll chat with you over the weekend on the postcast this has been locked on twins and we'll see you tomorrow night <laughs>